And why did you name it Style? Because the hook is we never go out of style. But before the so, hook. And I, thought, and I thought we never go out of style was a long title. Got it. Uh, got it. But before the hook, you didn't know what the title was going to be, right? Well, when you're writing a song, you just kind of are like, you know, you let the song happen and turn into what it's going to turn into. And that just ended up being the title. You describe a guy that uh, has a James Dean look in his eye, long hair, slick back, white T-shirt. Um, you date, you break up, you date again. Is this autobiographical? Is this autobiographical? The song is actually about kind of like those relationships that are never really done. You know, you always kind of have that person, that one person who you feel like might interrupt your wedding and be like, don't do it because we're not over yet. Um, I think everybody has that one person who, who kind of floats in and out of their life and is never tr like the narrative's never truly over. Um, do you have that person? Like I said, everybody has that person. And I was comparing that to trends in fashion and, and things you see in pop culture that never really right. go out of style. Does your person also sing? Um, one of the things about writing music and the, the only way that I can actually be vulnerable with this many people is to never name names. So right. that's like the one thing I have. With the name's it. a little provocative, but I understand what you're saying as well. And just get stuff and um, my friends like, for a while, like all of them had like empty apartments. And after like one time, I just like showed up at my my girlfriend's apartment, and she was like, "I love the idea of show business. I, I love um, you know making a big deal out of putting out an album and getting to dress up and the whole thing. It's it's amazing to." To be a songwriter and then to get to put on performances. I, I was just day. told that the, the new uh, album is already so hard to find a decent guy. Because <laughs> guys just generally are jerks. <laughs> I just kind of, I'm just not really looking around for them, at them. Because I have this big, like, loser <laughs> complex from school. And so I decided just the most logical thing to do it would just be to have them come over. And some are actually calling this song an equality anthem because of the following lyrics. Let me read them. Quote, and you can want who you want, boys and boys and girls and girls. Tell us what inspired this song. Uh, well, the song is inspired by what I love about New York, which is just kind of there's a freedom to, um, and there's a celebration of being unique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that was something that I was very inspired by. And also, I wrote the song. Um, I wrote the song kind of, kind of following the uh, when when gay marriage became legal in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that you know, it's so many of my friends. You know, some incredible songs, and I mean that, Gary. I really do. Uh, and you've written some great songs. <laughs> well. And the new single, right he now. doesn't. He always sings. <laughs> oh, sorry, I meant Robbie. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Tony, I didn't mean that. You made me do that. <laughs> He's not cute. He's old enough to be your father. No, I meant the, the, the flirtation. Between me and Gary? Yeah. I know. I prefer just... I'm coming back out in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary, you know it. Anyway, the new single... I, I read somewhere that you said it was designed to drive the ex absolutely crazy. What is that about? <laughs> I maybe said that one place, <laughs> maybe. On a bad day. Um. I want them to picture their ex-boyfriend, not mine. 